Hi guys. Hey, I see new faces. New faces. How, how, how many of you guys are new? And I know you, you, I asked that. You asked that. Yeah, you're, you're very new. Uh, well, I wasn't here yesterday. I was playing hooky. Not really. I was playing music for nine hours. Uh, anyways, I'm so thrilled. I'm absolutely over, over thrilled. Can you be over thrilled? <laughs> and over tired, obviously. But uh, I met this gentleman back in June uh, over at RPI, and we kind of came like soulmates. And I mean, we, we, we hit it off like in two seconds. He was incredible. We spent hours. All of a sudden, it was like 5.30 in the afternoon. We're going, ooh, we're only supposed to have an hour meeting. <laughs> uh, he is a master of, obviously, what you see around me. But he's also a master of life. I, I got to put it that way. You know, I mean, he's an incredible man. I'm, I'm sure I could go on and on and on about his story. His name is uh, Dr. Eddie Ade, and he wants you to call him Ade, A D E. I got it right? Knowles. Uh, I don't think I need to say much more about this amazing percussionist, educator. Uh, Google him, guys, afterwards, and <laughs> he'll tell you the story. Anyways, he's going to do some clinics for us, and then he's going to do a master class. So please give him your big round of applause and your love and attention. Well, I, he's recording me, so I promised him that I, I, I would try to work with the microphone, although I don't need one. But, but I'm going to help him out so he can get a recording where he can hear me. Uh, so I'm going to just kind of sit this over here. How are we doing? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Okay. And uh, I, I want to first uh, thank Mary and, and Jeff and, and, and Chris. Where's Chris just left the room? Where, oh, there he is. Okay. He moved from there. To, <laughs> okay. Uh, for inviting me to be, to be part of the Rock On. Uh, I've had a chance to, uh, to learn a lot about uh, this, this great, great program. And, uh, and the fact that you all get to, to do music all day, every day. Is that right? Yes. Do you like, let me see a show of hands of those of you who like to do that <laughs> all day, every day. Okay, that's good. Now, how about at night? Oh, okay, then you're my kind of musician. Because that's how I like to do it, all day and night. And uh, so uh, I'm going to uh, just share some things with you. Uh, Jeff uh, called me a master, and uh, maybe in another 50 years, I might be able to don myself with that title. Uh, I'm, I'm really a student of, uh, just like you are, I'm, 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 I've been studying maybe a little bit longer than you because I'm older than you, but I'm, I'm a student of, of African, Afro-Cuban, uh, and what I like to call New World Percussion, and I've been playing and recording uh, for about 45 years now and did a lot of traveling, playing uh, with different groups, some of which you probably don't even know the, the names of, but you can go Google us. Uh, and uh, let me see, so I'll mention some groups and people you probably do know. I've done performances on the same stage with people like Earth, Wind & Fire. You know that name? Steve, Stevie Wonder, uh, Mandrel, probably that's before your time. Casey in the Sunshine Band, McCoy Tyner, um, uh, Bobby McFerrin. Oh, anyway, so I've traveled all over the country, played all these concert halls. The group that I was playing with during that period was Gil Scott Heron, the Midnight Band. Some people like to call him the precursor to rap, but he he's passed away. But if he were here, he'd say that's not what I'm about. Uh, but anyway, uh, and then I've played and performed with African dance companies. Uh, I know you probably never heard of any of these groups. Uh, but but uh, my point is that uh, I've just been a student of the rhythms. And uh, I like to say that I've been chasing the rhythms for about 45 years. And so every time I catch a rhythm, I find out that was just the beginning of now catching the rest of what's linked to that rhythm. And so it's just been a constant chasing the rhythms. And uh, that's why I said maybe in another 50 years, I might be able to say that I'm a master. But one thing that I do love, and that's teaching. And I, love, I teach at a university. I teach what I do at, at RPI. And I tell all of my students, most of whom never, ever, ever, ever put their hands on any of these instruments before, but play a lot of other instruments, that 
Uh, I take it personally if you don't learn what I teach you. And uh, so I, I really work hard at making sure that by the time they finish the class, the course, they can play the rhythms. They, they, and they have an understanding of the history and the, and the connection and what we're doing and how all of this comes together. So I'm told today that I'm going to do several workshops throughout the day and that before the day is over, all of you I will have a chance to work with. I'm very, very excited about that. And you're all musicians, so there's some things I don't have to say. Uh, but I will just tell you a little bit. Uh, and, and, and actually, uh, I'm not going to play for the 45 minutes of this session. Uh, I'm going to play some. But I'm going to talk to you about how all of this works within the context of Afro-Cuban drumming today. That's my focus. Uh, and then I'm going to ask some of you to come up and join me. Uh, so that we're going to play together. Okay? How does that sound? Yeah. All right? Okay. All right. And if, and if I do or say something that you don't understand, just raise your hand and say, I day stop. Or if you want me to say it again, because I'm a percussionist, so we like to repeat it over and over and over and over. So, so yes, just stop me, okay? So anyway, let me, uh, let me introduce you to four of my, my favorite conga drums that live with me. And, and, and at night sometimes I'm just sitting and they'll start talking to me without me putting my hands on them and uh, give me ideas about what I should play. So I'll play a little bit for you, but I want to demonstrate some of the sounds of the different instruments that I've brought today. I brought a few toys with me, and they also have provided me with some more toys here to complement it, complement what I'm doing, and to just give you a flavor for uh, what we're going to experience together. Because the goal is by the end of the day that each group that I work with will be playing a rhythm. And I'll tell you about the rhythms I'm going to teach you to play and, and the history of it. So when you are here for your other sessions, you'll be able to put your guitar down or your bass or whatever and pick up a conga drum or the claves or the cowbell uh, or the shakers to uh, complement what's being played, OK? All right, enough talk. I think you'll be able to pick me up when I start playing without a mic. <laughs>
their function, okay? These two drums sitting on either side to me over here, these are called tumbadors. Say that, tumbador. tumbador. Oh, okay, I want to make sure y'all hadn't left the room yet. I couldn't hear. Okay, tumbadors. The tumbador in Afro-Cuban drumming has a very, very important role. It is what we call the bottom drum. Okay, and it plays the bottom parts in the rhythms. But it depends, uh, uh, let me qualify that a little bit, because it depends. If we're playing social music, uh, if we're playing rumbas, uh, it will play often the bottom part, okay? And we're going to see that happen today with your help. Uh, and then if we're playing spiritual music, or what's called bembe music, sometimes the tumbador actually plays the lead and calls, makes all the important calls in the rhythm, okay? So it depends on which way we're going with the rhythm, okay? 
Then there's segundo, which is literally in Spanish, second. Okay, and it is second to the quinto. And it's second to tumbador. So it's sitting in the middle between the tumbador and, and the quinto. And its role is to play in response to sometimes what's being played by tumbador and sometimes in response to what's being played by quinto, which is the drum sitting between my legs. The quinto is the highest pitch of the three. And oftentimes the quinto in social music is used to play the lead parts. And the tumbador and the segundo sometimes will have a conversation to complement what the quinto is playing. Okay? But the quinto is a drum that gets to do improvisation. Okay? These two drums their part is more structured, they're providing the support, but they also have conversations that they play as well in support of what the quinto is. The quinto can go all over the place. But the quinto in going all over the place stays within a defined structure. And the words that govern that structure are spelled C-L-A-V-E. Can anybody say that word? Clave. Clave. The clave. Now, I always tell the students, oh, I have to stay with the microphone. I'm sorry. Try. <laughs> I always tell my students in my class that I rarely give lectures. But there's one lecture that I'll be give at the beginning of the class, uh, at the beginning of the course, about this music and what they're going to learn to play over the course of the semester. And then I tell them, I say, now, I'm going to discuss something that's worth 50% of the course. And if you, if you learn this, you've got 50% of the course completed. And they all look at me like, the first day? <laughs> I said, all you got to do is understand clave in Afro-Cuban, in Latin music. And I'll tell you as students that... If you play chacho, cha cha cha, mambos, merengue, all of these different Latin salsa rhythms, they all have something in common. It's called the clave. What is clave? Clave is a by measure pattern. By measure. It has three strong beats and two. Weak beats. I'll play, I'll clap it for you. And you probably, as musicians, have heard clave more times than you even care to remember, but you may not, you know, nobody told you it was clave.
Two, five more little pads. of this and I have to talk into the mic but you know my, my hands need to be moving here you know what I mean so I say, okay <laughs> so all right so what I was trying to tell you basically is that it does not matter if you're listening to a salsa rhythm cha-cha mambo wawanko rumba wawanko it's either in two, three, or it's in three, two. And you oftentimes, when you're listening to this music, there are two pieces of wood that are usually being hit together to tell everybody. And it's called the claves, C-L-A-V-E-S. And I brought some, and Chris and everybody provided me with some uh, claves, okay? And we like to say that the claves are the key to the rhythm, okay? You go listen to a big salsa band. How many of you ever heard of Tito Puente? Eddie Palmieri, okay? Fajardo, well, maybe not. Johnny Pacheco, okay? Anyway, you go on, how many of you are on YouTube? Yeah, go on YouTube, key in Latin music, and for the next 10 days, because you'll never get through all of the music that's on YouTube, you'll be listening to the claves being played. And I have some back here, so let me get to the core of what I'm talking about. And while I do that, and while I'm doing this, Okay, I'll try to talk into the mic. <laughs> and wh while I'm doing this, I said a moment ago, when I asked about 4-4 four, four time, I said, let me see a show of hands again. 4-4 four, four time. Raise your hands, okay? Now, you see, everybody's hand is up. You know why? I'll tell you why. Because in this country, most of us who were born and raised in this country, we live our lives in 4-4 four, four time, okay? That's the governing rhythm in this country of people who were born here, okay? Now, stay with me on this. It's a very important concept because as musicians, when you step outside 4-4 four, four time, you're stepping outside of your comfort zone, okay? Because in this country, most of us live our lives in 4-4 four, four time. You, you hear some hip-hop music or R&B or whatever, what do you do? You start popping your fingers, you don't even think about it. You know, you popping your finger with your right hand and you over here texting somebody with your left hand. <laughs> you don't even think about it, right? Okay, but I want you to think about that. We live our lives 
in 4-4 time, okay? And so when we get into playing rhythms from other cultures, it stretches us in terms of our comfort zone. And sometimes when students are in my class, I tell them there'll be moments when they won't really know where the downbeat is. They'll be hesitating about, well, where is the down, what, wait, wait a minute, what? I, it's, it's, oh, I missed it again, okay? And, you know, they come in my class, they've studied violin and cello and bass guitar, even the trap drummers, oh, I love the trap drummers, you know? They, they get all confused. I said, wait a minute, you say you play drums? You know? So, it, but it is about you understanding the rhythm of your life, okay? And being able to open yourself up to rhythms from other cultures that people live their lives in, okay? So I just want you to keep that in mind as I ask some of you to come up and play with me. Uh, that it's about you experiencing that and being able to embrace it. And then once you do that, you're off on your own. Okay? Everybody got that? All right. So, Clavis. These two pieces of wood. Yes, sir. That's what? Isn't that two, three, four, uh, no, that's three, two. Thank you, Dylan. You the man. You keep us straight here, okay? I'm depending on you. All right, so that's three, two, then two, three. Everybody hear that? Now, these two pieces of wood, we could have a 15-piece orchestra up here playing a nice cha-cha-cha with horns going, bass, timbali player, piano, even a trap drummer playing, and you'll hear these two pieces of wood cutting through all of that because you know what? The entire orchestra is listening to this to the claves. Everybody is listening to this. This is defining the rhythm and it's defining the tempo. And it helps people play the texture in their instruments against the clave. One of my great teachers uh, who's now joined the ancestors from, from Cuba, his name was Enrique Mesa. He played with a group called Afro Cuba de Mantanzas. And he used to tell me, a day I live in the clave. I live in the clave. No matter what I'm playing, I'm playing in the clave. So when I was telling you earlier about the quinto playing the improvisation, it's still playing within the clave. Everybody with me? Good. All right. Yes. Question. When do you use three, two, or when do you use two, three? When do you know how to, which one to use? Oh, he, he just asked. He gets the golden prize here. He asked, when do you use 3-2 and when do you use 2-3? And, 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 and the answer to the question is it depends on which rhythm you're going to play from the very beginning. Okay, so if we're going to play a rumba wawanko, rumba wawanko until the day all the Cubans disappear on the planet Earth will always be played with the 2-3 in 4-4 four, four time. <laughs> okay, uh, the rumba Colombia, uh, which is a, a dance uh, that only the men do. It's a, it's a very macho dance. You know? uh, and uh, it's played sometimes in 2-3, in 12-8 time, and sometimes it's played in 3-2. Uh, and uh, so does that answer? It depends on the, the rhythm you're going to play. More often than not, a lot of bembe rhythms are played in 6-8 or 12-8 time, with, with two, three, and then sometimes three, two. And we're gonna play all of this, these rhythms today. We're gonna get to play them, okay? Parts as well, okay? It's a good question. Everybody heard Jeff's question? Okay, 
about when do you play 2-3 and when do you play 2-3. It depends on what rhythm we're getting ready to play. Okay? All right. So, what are these called? Clavier. Right. And tell me the two types of clave patterns that you can play. Stand up and tell them, shout it out. Thank you very much. Give that man a round of applause. He's got it. Okay, he's got it. All right. So now let me try another instrument. The cowbell. Okay, more cowbell. I got a t-shirt. More cowbell. I love that t-shirt. Okay, more cowbell. All right. This is a very dominant instrument. You know, and... This, like the claves, is going to tell everybody where the clave is because the claves and the bell both play the clave and they play off of each other, okay? They complement each other. Sometimes the patterns that this instrument will play, the two, three, or the three, two are literally embedded in it, but it's playing even more in its voice. And the bell has a lot of different voices, and depending on the type of bell you're using, uh, there's all kinds of things you can do, okay? And there are different types of bells, but this is the cow bell, okay? So it's got, it's got a nice wake you up call, right? You can't go to sleep when you got a bell player in your midst. Okay, but I will also tell you that if the bell player is off in the pattern, everybody's in trouble. You'll see all the congueros turn around and look at the bell player. <laughs> what are you doing? Because you can't play if this instrument is off, because it's loud. Okay, so the bell player especially has to make sure that she or he is on it. Okay, you're not just banging, you're playing, okay? And you're playing to create magic. One of my great teachers who was passed on to the ancestors, his name is Chief Bay, and you could go Google him too and, and watch some of his videos. And he used to always say, a day the bells, the bells create the magic in the rhythm, the bells. And when they played right, the bells create the energy that feeds the drummers who are playing. Because they're all playing, actually, the hand drummers are playing to the bell and to the claves. It's not the other way around. The support rhythms build the structure for the drums. So the drums are playing within the clave, and, they, and the clave is defined by these instruments. So when I teach my classes, the students don't even see a conga drum for the first three weeks. All they're doing is learning to play the bell, the claves, and this last instrument I'm going to show you uh, is the shaker, and then I want to get some people up before this session ends at 12.40, something like that. So I want to get some folks up uh, to join me just a bit, but we'll spend even more time as the day goes on. So, cowbell, cowbell. <coughs> Anybody know what this is called? No teachers in the room, please. No elders. <laughs> Anybody uh, 16 and under, 18 and under? <laughs> okay. Yes, sir. Yes, give him a round of applause, Dad. All right. All right. I'm telling you, he's the man here. You're teaching this session with me. I appreciate it. 
It's my teaching assistant over here, Dylan, right? Okay, so the shaker day, all right? Another support instrument, okay? who say, there's only a certain way you are supposed to play the shaker act. And I beg, if you show them anything other than this technique, the box technique I beg, you are not showing them, you are breaking the rules. So I listened to that when I was much younger. But then when I started traveling to Africa and I started looking at videos, because that's where this comes from, I discovered that any way you can think of playing this instrument to get a good sound from it is the right way. <laughs> so, back. I saw a movie, it was called Soul to Soul, years ago. Now the elders probably remember this. James Brown and a whole bunch of people went to Ghana and there were hundreds of thousands of people. And in the film, there was this man who came from this little village in sitting down here and he had a shaker rate with the beads were all inside the gourd. This is a gourd. The beads were all inside the gourd. And the gourd was a beads like a, like a, a, a soccer ball. And he would go from village to village where nobody had ever seen a board like that being played, and he would throw it up in the air and play rhythms and dance with this board. And unless you can, and I didn't come up on the stage and perform it. And I was mesmerized. Okay? You probably can find that video and show it to me. All right? This guy. I unbelievable. So my point is, you play like this? It's like wax. You drop it on the floor, it's going to crack. If you take your hand and you go like this, you're going to smash it. And I had a guy smash it. The beautiful board I had in the glass beads. And I was here. And I knew he was going to do it because he was going like this and we are playing the rhythm and it was getting hot. And I, I was looking to say, he's going to smash my board. And he did! So don't, okay, so I'm going to have one of you come up and join me throughout the day, but the only time you have a chance to open is, come to my toy, I'm going to show you some of my techniques for playing it, you get the bass notes and the front of the box techniques, but I want you to remember, if you get a shake of your own, any way you play, it's good. As long as you are playing within the clave and you are playing at it and the, and the board is singing. Anybody got that? And when the culture police come to you, you can tell them, I they said, any way I want to play this is okay. As long as I'm making good music. Everybody got that? All right, good. So now, we have a few more minutes. And what I need right now, I got more water than I can drink up here. Hey, thank you. Thank you very much. What I need now are some volunteers. I'm going to start with Dylan. That's my man. That's my teaching assistant. You come on up here. 
uh, I got several claves back here, and you've been you've been teaching them about claves. So you pick up you pick up these claves I just finished playing. Very good. All right, and I'm going to have you. So we, we got we got more chairs in the way right now, but I'm going to have you stand right here. Okay. All right. Now I need. I need two more volunteers for claves because I got I got another two sets of claves. Two clave players, please. Oh, thank you very much. He's stretchy, but he's very stretchy. Here we go. Come on, let's do this. There you go, my friend. You stand over there next to Dylan. Okay, one more volunteer for clave. Thank you very much. Come on up. Very good. Yeah, they are. All right. Okay, Dylan, you move over a little bit to the right, and, and you guys get to stay close to each other because you're a unit. Okay, now I need a cowbell player. Yes! Oh. I saw that hand going up. <laughs> you were like, well, yes. 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 Come on, Sasha. Come on. Come on. Give her a round of applause. Give her a round of applause. Yes. Over here. Over here. Over here. Over here. Over here. Over here. Okay. All right, Maestro. Cowbell. Sit. You got it. There we go. Right over here. Good. 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 Okay. All right. One more cowbell clip, please. I need I need a volunteer on Shaker Ray. There he is. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. You got it. Okay. All right. So, claves. Remember, I, I should get a claves so I can. So this is what I'm telling everybody while I'm showing them. You take clave players, show me your power hand. Is it your right or your left? Your left? Okay. All right. So you take the other hand and you hold the clave in this position. Okay? So that it's, it's nestled in here between the fingers and your thumb about halfway here on the front end and halfway on the back end, okay? And you should be able to take your finger and kind of stick it in here because there's, there's space in there so that you're not holding it like this. Everybody with me? Yeah. Okay, so you want to have, have some space in there, Dylan. Come on, you, you got, you, you got no, almost no space there. You want to create some space in there. That's right. That's right. Okay, let me see. And now you want to move this thumb because you don't want to hit that thumb with that piece of wood. That's going to hurt. Okay? Then you want to take the power hand and you want to take these two fingers, hold it like this still, three quarters of the way down, and then wrap these fingers around so that, and now take it and make a cross. Make a cross. Come a little bit more. That's good. Now, when you hit this, you want to make sure that you come down and you get that nice quality sound. Let me hear that. Oh, um, yeah. Yes, 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 yes. That's that. All right, these guys, thank you, buddy. I love students like this. This is going to be easy. All right, okay. So now we're going to play, we're going to play three, two. Now remember, make the cross, Dylan. Make the cross. That's good. Keep going, guys. Uh-huh. 
Uh-huh. Okay, keep going. Don't stop. Play together as a unit. Okay, now the bell. You want to hold the bell so that you got some space in here so you're not muffling the sound with, with, your, with your other hand, right? You take your power hand and you take the timbali stick with the power hand so you got some space in here. Sasha, you got space in there? All right, in here? That's good, so you're not muffing it, okay. Then you take the timbali sticks here and you wrap those fingers around just like they did with the, with the clavage, okay? Leave a little space down here at the bottom. Okay, so the, the stick is down here, son. That's good. And then you want to play on the head of the stick, okay? Okay, so, so I, I learned from a lot of traditionalists how to play percussion. They didn't put any music sheets in front of me, okay? They didn't count it out, okay, because they were raised in this tradition, so it was passed on to them from their elders, and they told me, I did, this is how I learned to play, I'm gonna teach you that way. I'm gonna play the rhythm for you, and then you're gonna imitate what you hear. And if you have a little trouble with it, Ade, I want you to sing the rhythm. Because you know what? All of these instruments are playing melody. It's a song. Percussion is melody. It's high order melody because it is a dominant force in the ensemble. That's why in a band, with all due respect to guitar players and everybody else, in a band, What's everybody listening to? Those traps back there. That's what you're listening to. That's what they're listening to when they're playing their instruments and they're soloing. It's the drummer. The drummer is the most important member of the group. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to say that. I, I apologize to all of you musicians. But when we stop playing, what happens? Nothing is being played then, unless you, you have a a cappella group that just plays without a track. But you understand where I'm coming from? What I'm saying is that the drummer has got to support everybody. And, and Max Roach, the all-time great trap drummer, everybody know that name, Max Roach? Yeah. Max Roach wrote an article years ago, maybe you can find it. He says, drummers don't get no respect. We don't get any respect. We're back there, we're playing colors behind this musician playing their solo and the piano player and the bass player, and everybody's playing their solos, and then when they're done, they all walk off the stage, and now it's my turn to play solo. I've been playing for 45 minutes, making everybody else. ain't nobody supporting me. So, I'm telling you that story because drummers, we have to be strong, and we have to be real focused on what we're doing, because we play in the clave to make everything else happen, all right? So when we're playing all these instruments here, it's one, it's a melody. So if you sing it, you can play it, okay? So, the bell part. All right, let's get the chorus going here. This is an acapella group. My man sitting over there with the shades on, he's very cool. Yeah. Like, yeah, okay, man, I'm, I'm just checking you out. You know. So take your glasses off so I can see you, too. There we go, all right. Yeah. So now, what I'd like you to do is sing with me. Gang, 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 g
Give them a round of applause here, yes. 